All right, good afternoon. My name is Joe Jamanko. I am the Director of Emergency Management here for St. Johns County, and I have a few announcements uh, this afternoon. Hurricane Milton is a large, dangerous hurricane, and it is expected to have major impacts in Florida and St. Johns County. As of 8 a.m. this morning, St. Johns County is under a hurricane warning, a storm surge warning, and a, f and a flood watch. During the pending impacts from Hurricane Milton, St. Johns County has issued a mandatory evacuation order for all healthcare facilities located in the following zones. Zone A, along the river and coast, Zone B, and Zone F, south of State Road 206. This evacuation order will go into effect 2 p.m. today. Additionally, residents and visitors residing in the following zones shall evacuate effective tomorrow, Wednesday, October 9th at 8 a.m. Zones A along the river and coast, Zone B, Zone F, State Road, and south of State Road 206. Residents living in boats, RVs, mobile homes, and low-lying floodplain areas. Therefore, starting tomorrow, Wednesday, October 9th at 8 a.m., three shelters will be open. We will have a special medical needs shelter at Freedom Crossing Academy, which is located at 1365 Shetland Drive, a pet-friendly shelter at South Woods Elementary School at 4750 State Road 206 West, and we will have a general population at Pedro Menendez High School, 600 State Road 206 West. While shelters provide a safety throughout the storm, residents must bring supplies and maintain for their personal comfort. For more information uh, on supplies that you'll need to bring or anybody needing assistance uh, for transportation, please call our citizen hotline at 904-824-5550. Those in the evacuation zone should understand that emergency response may become difficult as weather conditions deteriorate. There may be situations where first responders may not have access to your area. So for the safety of your family and our responders, please follow evacuation orders. Now I'd like to introduce our County Administrator, Joy Andrews. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here today. Just like Joe Giamanco just mentioned, that we're expecting very severe weather and also extensive rainfall of 8 to 10 inches. By saying that, I want to say there are roads are potentially going to be impassable. We do have three stations that are actually located in the evacuation zone, and that is station 9, 6, and 7. At this time, we're not planning an evacuation for those stations. However, it is a possibility that our response ability will be heavily impeded by the weather condition and the roads condition due to the flooding. With that said, we purposefully um, structured the timing of evacuation order of 2 p.m. today for health care, and that is assistant fo uh, living facility and nursing homes. There are 17 of you all, and our emergency management staff has been working with all of you diligently up to this point. Do not wait. Help our senior residents to evacuate as soon as possible. With the rest of the population, we structured evacuation order to be 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. For the same reason, do not wait. If you need to make transportation plan, now is the time. Because of our response to any kind of rescue calls may be limited during the peak of the storm, make sure you have food and medication so that you can take safety measures for yourself and your family. And secondly, I want to give you a quick update on our county normal operation because we are focusing all of our resource singularly on our emergency response and shelter preparation. Our regular county business facilities operation hours will be suspended for the full day of Wednesday and Thursday. So just to take note of that, if you plan to visit any of our facilities like the libraries, we will not be opening on Wednesday and Thursday. Thirdly, I want to give you a quick update on the yard debris removal. Just to repeat what we said yesterday, our recycle services will be suspended for the remainder of the week. Your regular household waste collection will remain the same. For the reason that we are singularly focusing all of our recycle yard waste removal resource for debris removal before the arrival of Milton. 
our um, sandbag operation, wanted to mention real quick that we have given out about 44,000 um, sandbags since yesterday. We are continuing offering free sandbags until 5 p.m. today. So make sure that you get your sandbag when still there is time. Next, I wanted to thank you for all of your patience. Again, I cannot repeat this enough. Please do not wait. Take safety measures when you can before the time is here. So next, I wanted to introduce Sheriff Harwick and the Chief Avalis to give you very important public safety updates and announcements. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you, County Administrator, and again, thank you today for allowing us to put out this clear, concise, and factual information to you. Um, we at the St. John's County Sheriff's Office are working hand-in-hand, -hand, of course, with our partnership, especially in public safety, St. John's County Fire and Rescue, St. Augustine Fire, St. Augustine City Police Department, and St. Augustine Beach Police Department, as well as the National Park Service. We ask you this, as we start the evacuation pro process tomorrow at 8 a.m., please adhere to our warnings. If you don't need to be out of your homes, let these other people that have chose to evacuate ahead of the time schedule to move about the county so they can uh, simply get out of here and go to a safer place. This storm, as we've seen in the past, and we've done this a lot, are unpredictable. So don't compare this to anything else. It has its own feet. It's coming across our state of Florida. It's going to wreak havoc on the entire state of Florida to include us here in St. John's County. We flood under normal high tide. You understand that. We are very wet right now. And the only way you can help out public service and public safety is to stay off our streets. We at the St. John's County Sheriff's Office will meet with the city's uh, police departments, St. Augustine City and St. Augustine Beach, if indeed a curfew comes out. At this time, I'm not saying there is a curfew. But if indeed a curfew comes out, which I would assume would be tomorrow night or Wednesday night, you will know ahead of schedule through some type of press release. So please monitor the St. John's County EOC, monitor the city of St. Augustine, the city of St. Augustine Beach, and the St. John's County Sheriff's Office. Again, we ask you this, stay off the streets. If you've chose to stay, the rest of the state is of course evacuating as you can see today. This storm has changed capabilities just since the last few hours. But this is gonna hit us at a major category three or four it's argumentative, it's subjective, it doesn't matter. We're gonna take on massive storm surges, as you know, in the west part of our state, but it's gonna come across our state, our county, which is very wet as it sits today. We'll talk real quick briefly about the bridge closures. The bridge closures will not close until sustained winds of 40 miles per hour. Again, not gust 40 miles per hour, sustained winds of 40 miles per hour. We will make those bridge closures in partnership with St. John's County Fire and Rescue, St. Augustine Fire, St. Augustine City Police Department, and St. Augustine Beach along with EOC. So no need to call, just monitor our social media platforms, monitor of course uh, the media platforms here that cover St. John's County, and that information will be put out to you um, as we see fit to protect you. If indeed we make it again, as we come into the evening hours on Wednesday, we ask you to stay home. If you have made the decision to stay, you need to stay in your homes and stay home so public service, public safety can do their job. With that being said, if you have any questions, contact the non-emergency number at the St. John's County Sheriff's Office, of course, and monitor the EOC. At this time, I'm going to introduce our city fire chief, Chief Carlos Avalese, to give an update on fire rescue fire services. Chief Avalese. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, Carlos Avalis, Fire Chief for the City of St. Augustine. I have some messaging specific to the City of St. Augustine and our residents. Uh, from a messaging perspective, our message is very clear that you have today and some of tomorrow to finish your final preparations for storm uh, impacts. Our message to residents is if you flooded during Hurricane Irma or Nicole, that you are likely to experience flooding again. We are expecting three to five feet of storm surge, uh, we're certainly susceptible to that along the coast. The sandbagging operations were very busy yesterday. We were happy to see that. But I want to speak specifically to the residents of North and South Davis Shores, the Lincolnville neighborhoods, those that live adjacent to Lake Maria Sanchez, the Oyster Creek neighborhoods, Fullerwood, Nelmar Terrace, and those that live in proximity to Florida Avenue. Those folks are certainly susceptible to flooding. If you have flooded in any of these past storms, you need to be taking precautions today. Uh, city offices will remain closed Wednesday and Thursday. They are open today uh, for normal business hours, but they will be closed Wednesday and Thursday in conjunction with other government offices around the county. The city has waived its parking fees at the downtown parking garage for folks and residents to move vehicles out of flood-prone, low-lying areas. At last check, there were less than 200 spaces left available. So if you are, would like to take advantage of that, take the opportunity today to do so. 
Sandbagging operations on Francis Field commenced yesterday. They continued this morning with another round of, of sand delivery. That sand at the current rate that it is being used is expected to be complete by 2 to 3 p.m. this afternoon. So again, take advantage of the time that you have today. An update on Hurricane Helene debris cleanup. Uh, we anticipate all Helene debris cleanup to be finished today. Regularly scheduled solid waste collection will continue today and tomorrow. It will be suspended on Thursday and Friday. All efforts will be focused on debris cleanup, so there will be no recycling. Reminder to folks that are choosing to stay in town not to drive through or wade through floodwaters. Those waters are oftentimes contaminated, um, and you driving through a flooded neighborhood may make the difference between you waking somebody's home and then receiving flood damage or not. So stay off the roads and do not drive through flooded streets. Once again, take advantage of the time that you have available today to complete your preparations. Uh, at this time, I'm going to welcome Sarah Arnold, the chair of the St. John's County Board of County Commissioners. Thank you, Chief Avalese. This afternoon, I'm going to ask all the residents of St. John's County to please take this storm seriously, as we are. We are committed to the community's care and safety, but it is time that you make prudent and purposeful choices. Even if you aren't in a mandatory evacuation zone that we just listed, if you feel unsafe, leave and leave now. We need everyone to stay safe and informed. Our citizen information hotline is 904 824 5550 and our webpage is www.sjcfl.us backslash hurricane. Before we go to questions, I want to take a moment to highlight and thank all of the amazing county staff working here in this building and out throughout the county to keep all of us safe. I would ask you that you keep them and their families that they are taken away from during the storm in your thoughts and prayers. With that, I'll turn it over to Joe Giamanco for any questions that we might have. Thank you. Uh, in addition to the speakers on stage, we have representatives from the uh, city and the city beach, as well as county fire rescue. Uh, with that, I'll take any questions. Uh, just to clarify, the evacuation starting 8 a.m. tomorrow for zones A, B, and F, those are mandatory to the classification? Correct. It's uh, A, B. Uh, a, B along the river and the coast, uh, and then zone F south of 206. Joe, um, please elaborate a little bit more about the, um, the shelters, please. Absolutely. Um, so and, then, and then also remind people what type of housing, if they're in a more modest home, a mobile home, uh, maybe in a floody area. Give them some tips on how to go and relocate to a shelter where they're located. Maybe just expound upon that a little bit. Great. Uh, I, will, I will, again, restate the three shelters. We'll have three shelters open tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Uh, we'll have a special needs medical needs shelter. We'll have a pet-friendly shelter, and we'll have a general population shelter. Uh, the special medical needs shelter will be at Freedom Crossing Academy, and that's 1365 Shetland Drive. We have a pet-friendly shelter at South Woods Elementary, which is at 4750 State Road 206 West, and a general population, which is at Pedro Menendez High School, 600 State Road 206 West. Uh, that also includes, as you've mentioned, uh, residents that are in flood-prone areas, RVs, mobile homes. Uh, they are also susceptible to the wind and potential flooding. So they are to seek shelter in these shelters or find shelter on their own. Uh, and again, if you want additional information on those shelters or any information uh, about evacuations or routes or how to get to those locations, please bit or call our citizen information hotline. Again, that number is 904-824-5550 or visit our website at uh, www.sj, or excuse me, dot, uh, had it here for a second. Uh, it's the SJCFL. Uh, dot US. Dot US, sorry. <laughs> One more time. Uh, yes, it's the uh, www.sjcfl.us backslash hurricane. Uh, I heard you guys mention, you know, staying out of floodwaters, you know, 
during the coal, we saw a lot of people out, even like kids, playing in the floodwaters around the Bridge of Lions. Is there any like plan to have maybe sheriff's deputies stationed to like actively discourage that? I, you know, a man got shocked uh, from an exposed wire during the coal. Well, obviously, we don't want anybody going into any of the floodwaters. Just like uh, Chief Avley said, you don't want anybody wa uh, waiting in there. You don't want anybody driving in there. Uh, I don't know, Sheriff, if you wanted to address that specifically. Yep. Uh, this is a simple answer. We're going to ask for parents to step up and hold um, themselves accountable and hold their children accountable. Uh, again, this was a horrific incident that happened in downtown St. Augustine. If it wasn't for the bravery of the first responders in St. John's County, the city of St. Augustine, it could have been more tragic than what it was. So, again, this is a little bit of self-policing by you. Um, there's a lot going on, and the only way to provide sometimes public service and public safety to you is adhered by the rules. And the rules are stay in your house or under evacuation orders. Uh, we know the city of St. Augustine, the historic city, floods on a, on a, a nor'easter or high tide sometimes. So with that, we're asking you to, again to uh, help us out, help uh, public service and public safety by just staying in your houses so we can do our jobs to protect the ones that decide to make the wrong decisions. Yes, sir. For the neighborhoods of concern, the ones that need to evacuate, uh, will crews go around neighborhoods knocking on doors, reminding folks, or blasting it from a megaphone saying, y'all need to get out? Um, at 8 a.m. And, and 2 p.m. tomorrow? Well, we have, again, we're, we're doing all these news conferences. We're trying to get the message out uh, via social media and as wide net as we can. Um, we will uh, have, again, people out there uh, talking to residents, trying to get the word out. Um, but again, I'm not sure if the sheriff or the fire rescues can actually have anybody on a bullhorn out there yelling at people right now. Do you know if there's a lot of elderly in that kind of region that you might have to assist with? So our community is has residents that are uh, a more elderly a community, um, and that's why we're trying to focus our attention on those specific times for evacuation, daylight hours, trying to give it additional attention. We have been receiving a lot of phone calls from residents on what to do, and so we've been giving those information to the residents that are calling. So yes, we are assisting it wherever we can. For those under evacuation orders, is there an estimated time when you think it might be safe for them to get back to their homes? And for those who aren't evacuating, what do they need to be doing today, tomorrow to get prepared? So for the people that are that have evacuated, again, we have to go through the storm. We don't know what it's going to bring on Thursday and what we're going to see. So that's a little premature to give you exact times or anything to, when anybody can return to their homes. As for people that are, are staying, again, follow the mandatory evacuation orders. We do want people to be in harm's way. We don't want to put our first responders in harm's way. But if you decide to stay, again, if you have a medical emergency or something else that's uh, affecting you during the, the storm, as uh, Ms. Andrews said, there's going to be times that, that it might be impassable for us to get to you. So you need to understand that. But if you are, you need to prepare by, again, having some water, food, things that, that are non-perishable that you can sustain yourself um, at, at your house. During the cold, that one section at A1A washed out, and I think FDOT was able to repair it in, what, a day or two or something? Pretty quickly. Are you expecting, like, that level of support or, you know, with, considering the storm's going to be impacting such a wide you know, swath of the state, may it be a little longer for repairs like that to be made? Well, again, you're absolutely right. Again, the this storm is affecting the entire state of Florida, as you can see, as it's coming across, and uh, again, really impacting the West Coast. And resources are going to be scarce. Um, but I, we have very good partnerships here within the county with all our agencies. So I would expect that as soon as we can to get to any repairs or, or things that we need to do, uh, we will be able to get there. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.